Okay, good morning. Last spring I was excited at the vision of a conference in which some thinkers would talk about capitalism as seen by them and the societies in which they live, the UK, Germany, France, Sweden, Italy, and America. I'm delighted to see now the extraordinary thinkers who will be speaking today at this conference. I want to share some thoughts of mine on the subject very briefly. First, capitalism was not the source, the root, of the unprecedented innovating and the resulting job satisfaction in Britain, America, Germany, and France from around 1870 to 1970, the West's golden age. The source lay in the many people engaged in various activities of the economy, from employees thinking of a better way of making a thing to musicians coming up with a new song to sell. Yet, capitalism was a force in that ep epoch. The capitalist system was always drawing resources of labor and capital from uses of low commercial value to uses of greater commercial value. New firms arose to make use of new methods and make new methods and to make new products. And old firms needing to compete competed with their new own new products. All that brought huge economic gains to society, even if the resulting resource allocations were not perfectly efficient. The waves of immigration, by the way, to America may have been a drag on wage rates. Much corruption has risen, though. Many corporate heads are said to be, are said to use their money to induce their representatives in Washington to pass legislation in their favor or block legislation not in their flavor. DC is teeming with interest groups. That's not capitalism. That's an ugly distortion of, of uh, capitalism. Uh, it has been observed for decades that capitalist enterprises are often managed, some of them even heavily owned, by people who were advantaged either by birth, upbringing, or education, and hence able to win a job paying far more than the way of the less advantaged. The resulting inequality brought about by all this has been to some degree, maybe to a large degree, regenerated from one generation to the next. Much of this inequality could have been addressed by the government. And in the developing nations of the West, some of it is addressed. In the US, the Congress acted the, in income, the earned income tax credit of 1975, later tax credits for low wage workers with no children in 1990, that served to pull up wages and employment of the less advantaged workers. Now it seems the force has swung from the huge inequality between the bottom and the middle, the hardships of the working poor, to the huge inequality between those in the middle and those at the top. A lot of people, thanks to their insights or just out of good fortune, have got extremely rich and may be getting even richer through ventures that brought huge profits. As is well known, there are headliners in the entertainment business who have amassed immense wealth. Taylor Swift in her world tours, Elton John who played on for decades, and numerous Hollywood stars. Though there is no criticism of their wealth or their fees, there are also successful speculators who serve to enable successful businessmen to diversify their assets. Then there are those who have huge inheritances. Even if there is little enthusiasm for taxing away high levels of profits, mainly to trim inequality, 
Why not raise tax rates on profits to obtain the public revenue with which to build a better society? Thank you for coming. I look forward to the presentations and the discussions.